So in this particular video, we are going to understand the connection between human memory and the Ising model to our understanding of what are called as Hopfield networks. So in this intro, let us understand what is the difference between computer memory and human associative memory and lay the foundations for the later sections of this particular video. So what is a computer memory in the conventional sense? In the conventional uh, computer memory, we usually give uh, an address to the memory. And from that particular address, we retrieve the data associated to that address stored in that memory device. However, the human associative memory does not work in such a manner. Let us uh, for now think of the brain as a neural network where we have a set of neurons denoted by these circles which are interconnected to each other by what are called as synapses. To the brain, we usually give a cue or we get a cue and then we retrieve the data stored in the brain. For example, let's say the data, the cue that the brain receives is neighbor's dog and the brain will process this particular cue and give you the data of the color, the breed, the size, the name, etc. of that particular cue that you received. You can think of it this in another way also. Suppose that this is a particular pattern which is stored in your memory. and you give a cue like this to the memory this was stored in the memory uh, and you give a cue something like this to the memory the memory will look at this pattern let's say this is a cue and it will retrieve and correct this particular cue and it will retrieve the data and say that no it was not something like this but the pattern was something like this and this is your output from the memory when you give this particular cue so this is how the associative memories work you already saw that in the conventional computer memory we give an address however for the associative memory we give a queue and we can see here queues can be partially correct however addresses have to be completely correct so you can see that there is a difference between how the conventional computer memory works and how the associative memory works now the question remains how do we mimic such a associative memory uh, artificially so the idea came in the form of what we call as the Hopfield networks in 1980s. And as you may have predicted, it was uh, inspired. It was the idea was given by a scientist named as John Hopfield in 1980s. So a Hopfield network is nothing but a neural network where each of the neuron is connected to each other neuron in the network. This is a bit different from the usual feed forward networks that we study. Feed forward networks that we usually study where we have a input layer, we have a out hidden layer and we have an output layer. These are the feed for forward neural networks, but these are not a feed forward neural networks. You can call them as recurrent neural networks where there is no such thing as an input or output layer. Okay, so now this idea came to John Hopfield uh, he was inspired from the Ising model in physics, which we already know is a model where we have 
a lattice of spins and they are connected to each other by a coupling strength. So John Hopfield connected the idea of the icing model to the human associative memory through the Hopfield networks. In the later section of the video, we will understand the late, how, how this was uh, done. And in later videos, we may also explore what are called as the quantum Hopfield networks and how they could fare better than the classical version. Let us now understand how the human brain works. So you can think of the brain as a bustling city of interconnected roads uh, where neurons are the bustling inhabitants or buildings and they are all interconnected by roads. So the idea of how such a network can learn something was given by Donald Hebbs and it is called as the Hebbian learning. So it explains how the neurons form connections based on certain activities. So let's see that how this uh, biological, in the biological sense, how the neurons are connected to each other. So we have, let's say, one neuron over here, let's name it neuron I, and then another neuron, neuron J. And these neurons are connected by these particular connections called as synapse. And there are electrical and chemical exchanges between these two neurons by these particular sites called as, called as synapse. Now there can be some synapses which are stronger and some synapses which are uh, not as strong as the other one. So we can give some weights to the strength of the synapse and we can express this particular thing, the synaptic strength in a mathematical sense uh, as a matrix. So this idea was given by Donald Hebbs and this particular process is pivotal in learning and memory. So you can think of this idea of Hebbian learning uh, in just a particular phrase. So you can just summarize this idea in a particular fr phrase, which is fam famously said in such a manner that neurons that fire together wire together. So you can think of this idea that when two new neurons they are firing simultaneously, the strength of the synapse will be higher between them compared to if there is another neuron which is not firing at the same time as this particular neuron, the strength between them will be weak. You can think of this idea in a analog, uh, in a uh, using some analogy. So let's say that you are trying to train your dog to fetch a ball and whenever you try to train your dog to fetch a ball, you throw the ball and if the dog comes to you by after fetching the ball, you give the dog a treat and in that way, the dog learns to associate getting treats with fetching the ball and eventually the uh, dog will learn that whenever the ball is thrown. Uh, the dog has to fetch the ball as the game. So this is a very crude example. Of course, even the idea the, that neurons that fire together, wire together, is not the currently accepted version of how the learning works, but it's one of the earliest examples and uh, a kind of a crude way to understand how the human brain works uh, or learns. So let us understand this idea a bit mathematically. So as I said that these synaptic strengths between the uh, neurons, let's say we have neuron 1, 2 and 3 and we have synapse, 
sys connecting them then we can create what is called as a weight matrix let's say this is w12 w23 and this is w13 and the connections of the neuron with itself by w11 w22 and w33 in the symmetric version of the hebbian learning uh, okay first before that this particular strength between the synapses can be given by a matrix let's say this is w11 w12 w13 w21 w22 w23 w31 w32 and w33 in the symmetric version of the hebbian learning these weights or the strength of the synapses with itself is considered to be zero so wij we can say we can give this rule to this particular network that wij is equal to zero for all i equal to j and there is another rule that this uh, synaptic strength is symmetric that is w12 is equal to w21 because the same road which is connecting them or the same wire which is connecting them so mathematically we can write it as wij is equal to wji for all i not equal to j so these will be the conditions which will apply on the weight matrix of the synaptic strength now how do we understand how these weights get modified over time so let's say that the uh, activation of the two neur neurons uh, is given by y i where i goes from 1 to n where n is the number of neurons in that particular network and y i is usually considered to have a value of 0 or and 1 or minus 1 and 1 we will use this convention so let's say that there are two neurons and the activation is given by y i and y j of these two neurons then the synaptic weights or the synaptic uh, weight matrix will be a 2 cross 2 matrix w11 w12 w21 w22 and these weights will be zero and there will be a symmetry between these two now let us understand this particular phrase that we said neurons that fire together wire together so let's say that uh, we consider the case one where the neurons fire together in that case yi should be equal to yj that is if yi is equal to plus one then yj is equal to plus one and if yi is equal to minus one then yj is equal to minus one you can think of it in this way if i represent with this colored circle minus one and with the uncolored circle plus one then this is these are the two scenarios that we could have when the neurons fire together so in that case uh, the weight matrix or in general the weight matrix uh, update rule says that delta w i j is equal to eta times y i y j where eta is a learning rate and we usually consider it it equal to 1 and wij is the update at time n plus 1 we will have discrete time and at time n and these yi's at are at time n so this is the update rule of the weights in the hebbian learning so let's say when these two neurons fire together yi and yj what happens to this update we see that wij is equal to 1 into 1 into 1 for this particular case and it is equal to 1 into minus 1 into minus 1 for this case in both these cases the neurons fire together and wij is equal to plus 1 let us now consider the case 2 when neurons don't fire together so 
pictorially it can be represented in this manner this neuron is uncolored and this is colored and this is colored and this is uncolored so we will have two cases where this is plus one this is minus one this is minus one and this is plus one or mathematically we can write it as yi is equal to minus yj then in that case wij delta wij is equal to 1 into 1 into minus 1 or it is equal to 1 into minus 1 into 1 in both cases the value is minus 1 we can say that when this is having a positive value or a greater value then the synaptic strength gets strengthened and we can literally see from our phrase that neurons that fire together they wire together and when they are not firing together we see that the value becomes negative and lesser and lesser and we can see that the strength gets weakened over time so this is the idea of how the Hebbian learning works usually in our brain we have a network of a lot of neurons which are interconnected to each other and there is a synaptic strength so let's say we have some uh, phenomenon that is occurring let's say rain is occurring uh, so if the rain it uh, triggers a few of these neurons let's say this neuron this neuron and this neuron and let's say uh, there is another event associated with rain let's say dark clouds we are seeing there and it 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 fires a few of the neurons let's say this neuron uh, this neuron and this neuron then what will happen is that uh, the neurons which are activated simultaneously the synaptic strengths between them will get strengthened And the neurons which are not getting activated by it, their strengths will get weakened. And this is how this memory of rain and dark clouds will be stored in the human brain. So in that same manner, now the question remains, can we mimic this idea in a artificial neural network? And the idea came from the inspiration of the icing model, because in the icing model, we also have uh, sites here instead of neurons we have spins and these spins have a value or uh, spin let's say plus one one or minus one and they are all interconnected to each other the spin we have if we have a spin lattice we see that it is interconnected to each other with certain weights associated to it so we can try to extrapolate this particular neural network idea of storing memories to the icing model and let's see how the icing model works in a mathematical sense and move forward so now let us understand uh, the icing model so that we can understand the relation between the icing model and the biological neural network that we used for understanding the Habian learning process. So imagine that you have a grid of uh, spins like this. So we have these spins uh, distributed on a 2D platform and they are all connected to each other by some coupling constant and they are all interacting with each other now let's say that uh, we represent this uh, and and all of these pins or tiny magnets can only have two directions that is either down or up and let's denote this by sigma and the value as plus one uh, minus one and plus one And let us denote the strength between the interaction strength between these spin points or the points on this icing model uh, grid to be denoted by j you can see that 
this particular value j or this uh, quantity j will be a matrix where j i j represents the strength between the ith spin and the jth spin. It is easy to see that the value of j i j will be equal to j j i and j i j that is the interaction with itself can be considered to be equal to zero. Now if you compare this Ising model, the mathematical model to the biological neural network, then when we had the synaptic strength, let's say we create a table of the biological neural network and Ising model and compare them, the synaptic strength in the biological neural network denoted by Wij can be equated to the uh, coupling constant in the icing model. And the activations of the neuron, the value of the activation of the neuron Yi can be compared to the spins. And we see that we just saw here that they follow the same rules as for the biological neural network that we discussed for the Habian learning process. Now, the energy, so basically we can give some energy to this uh, or we can define some potential energy. What is potential energy? Potential energy is the energy associated with the configuration of any system. For example, let's say we talk about the ball, a ball on uh, the earth at some height, the potential energy is mgh. It's the energy of the configuration of this ball that is at which is at the height h from the ground. In the same way, we can associate a potential energy to this particular grid. And that energy is given as h equal to minus j summation sigma i sigma j or let's say this is sigma j i j sigma i sigma j minus b summation of sigma i where we we can say that b is some external magnetic field which is applied on this particular system and it acts on each and every site on this system. Now what will happen is that this configuration if it starts at some particular uh, spins, let's say it starts at some particular spin or let's give it an example. Uh, let's say this is the configuration that we are talking about up, up, up up, 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 and this is down, down, down. Now let's say this is the equilibrium configuration that is the minimum energy configuration of this system. So this H will be H minimum in this particular configuration. This will be defined by these particular synaptic strengths or sorry, the coupling constants between the uh, sites. Let us for now ignore that there is any external magnetic field. So let's consider this to be equal to zero. So then what we will see is that suppose we move away from this particular equilibrium condition and let's say at time t equal to zero my configuration of the system uh, looks something like this. Then over time, the system will evolve and reach the stable configuration. After some time t, it will reach the stable configuration and the energy of the system and the energy of the system, if I plot energy at time t, this was equal to 0, 
then this energy will reach the minima at time t equal to t. t. The energy of the icing system will reach the minima when it reaches this equilibrium position or the stable point of the system. In the same way, you can think that uh, if we associate a physical quantity like energy to the biological neural network, we will see that if this is some Q which is being uh, stored in my memory, this is some data of a pattern which is stored in my memory, then if I start with some Q given to this biological neural network, at some time t, it will evolve after some time to this particular pattern and stop evolving and reach a stable point. If we associate an energy kind of energy like a function to uh, the biological neural network, then we can see that in a similar way, it will, that's denoted by EB, it will reach the minima of the energy. So in the same way, so by this analogy, by this particular example, we can see how the icing model is similar to how the human memory learns or memorizes through the Habian learning process. Now the question remains, how can we mimic this using artificial neural networks? We will see this in the second part.